Hello again, it's an extremely busy week in terms of news flow. We've got the ECB, NFP Friday and also OPEC. All topics I've been discussing with Jamie Jemison from Global Reach Partners. Uh, Jamie, let's start with the Eurozone. There's lots, lots going on this week. Uh, we've seen some better CPI data. Um, what does that say about the ECB's QE policy? Is it more of a case that we've seen an uptick in oil prices over the recent months? Um, oil certainly has come up. Um, if you look at where we were at the beginning of the year, we were near $45 a barrel. We're trading up towards the $60 a barrel. So we were expecting to see inflation tick higher as oil prices went higher. Um, it does also obviously suggest that maybe the ECB's plan of pumping more money into the economy as well with regards to its um, quantitative easing programme is also starting to filter through, which has given the euro a little bit of strength at the moment as well. We've obviously got the ECB meeting tomorrow. Mario Draghi is going to be giving his press conference as always. I mean, obviously QE will be on the agenda, but it's all going to be about Greece, isn't it? Do, do you see any movement there in terms of the situation? Because we're getting to a really cru crucial point again. Um, yes, I mean, they had a, a closed door meeting yesterday Today. You had um, Draghi, Juncker, um, Christine Gard, um, Francis Holland and Merkel all sat down discussing about the, the Greece situation and as you quite rightly so, it is all about Greece. Um, I mean, the quantitative easing programme is a bit of a given we are going to see rhetoric come out of that and we're probably going to see a slightly more hawkish um, commentary with regards to the Eurozone economy as a whole and what the um, QE programme has done and probably leave it open-ending as well. But Greece is the, um, the ultimate topic at the moment and we are coming towards crunch time and what I do probably envision happening is a repeat and it's going to be a case of deja vu. We've come to crunch time so many times now and I wouldn't be at all surprised if we do see a delay in the programme or some mild compromise being met um, by Greece and its creditors. But that is where the main focus is at the moment and because they, there was this behind doors meeting last night Markets are starting to feel a little bit more optimistic, mm -hmm. and hence we're seeing a slight um, pickup in dollar in euro strength, should I say? Yeah, another big market moving event is going to be OPEC. They have this meeting every half year. You yep. suddenly have to become an oil expert. So, so what do you think are going to be the implications from this meeting? Um, I mean, the rumours are that we're not going to see OPEC actually make any cuts in production, um, which could put, could result in a, a fall in the oil price yet again. How far it goes is, is really untold at the moment. Um, but I think it's, it's the ramifications outside of that and what it means for the global economy as a whole. Um, one of the, I say, one of the components that's actually required or mandated for interest rate hikes is in effect in a, a healthy level of inflation. And if you're not seeing inflation picking up, um, whether it is here in the UK or the US, it makes it more difficult to justify raising interest rates. It doesn't mean it's not a interest rate hike is not going to happen, but it does make it a bit more um, contentious as the timing of it and what could actually happen with regards to the future plans of inflation. Uh, we're going through these very quickly. NFP Friday as well. Uh, it, it, it's, it's extremely important now because we saw the US GDP revised down. So this is really going to mm -hmm. give us an indication of how the US economy is performing. Given the economic backdrop and given the comments that we've seen from various Fed members, they have left the door slightly ajar for a potential rate, rate hike in June. So the market is going to be slowly focusing on this NFP figure mm -hmm. and seeing if it comes out positive. If it does come out positive and it comes out above 250,000, the markets are going to start speculating, maybe pricing in a very small chance that we will see an interest rate hike um, in the middle of this month when the FOMC meet. I think it is worth noting that if, we are, if we're looking at some of the component parts, we saw the ISM manufacturing figures come, come out yesterday and they reported that the employment component of the manufacturing sector actually increased. Um, it went up by about 3.4 points off, off the top of my head into an expansion territory, which does suggest that we could see a slightly better than expected um, non-funds payables come Friday. Yeah, in, in terms of the currency implications, it's getting harder and harder to pick uh, the currencies which are buy or, or sell at the moment. Um, what do you think is going to be the real winner from all this data when we sit down on Monday morning? I still think it's going to be um, dollar positive. 
Um, I think the overall, the overall trend that we've seen in, in the last couple of weeks, we did see some softer data, but data from the US is now starting to pick up. Um, I think if you look at things on a more more global basis and looking at currency markets as a whole, we've seen dollar yen trading at 13 year highs. We've seen it make big advances against the euro with regards to the Greece situation. And I don't think those overall trends are going to disappear. The Greece situation, yes, we may see some resolution, but it is going to continue to run along. I think regardless if they increase interest rates this month or not, I think the, the, fact, the fact of the matter is they are still on, on course to be raising interest rates and then the focus will move to September, which is going to still result in a stronger dollar if we see positive data continue to come out from the region. Well, it's great to catch up with Jamie. Stay tuned for more interviews and analysis, but from London, goodbye for now.